homemade traditional Peruvian dessert, alfajores, basket of ham, beef, turkey, veggie gourmet sandwiches. Call Giveaways Catering, phone number 778-245-3007. Welcome to the Immigrants Magazine's program. I am Fabiola Palomino, your host. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to find peace. Can we buy them? Where are they? How? We can get it. Today in our episode, we are opening our Living in Peace and Happiness segment. But first, our visa. As an immigrant, of course, because I came from life which uh, you know it was very comfortable and established life we had everything and uh, as a very young immigrant uh, i had to start from zero every moment of the day we have to come back to that choice we made i personally every morning when i wake up i decide i'm going to be happy thanks canada for accepting us as part of your culture Canada is a second home for millions of immigrants coming from or around the world. We love you, Canada. Eva Mirnia is our guest on our Tell Us Your Story segment. She's from Iran and she came to Canada in 1983. She told us that uh, since her childhood, she was living surrounded by art. She's a painter, writer and poet. Eva Mirnia. It's our guests on our Telashar story segment. Coming to Canada, um, basically, uh, probably, is the uh, most challenging uh, life for immigrants, which they face. Um, not only for me, which I'm working right now with newcomer immigrants and refugees and ISS, I hear the same, actually, difficulty. Um, I can see um, at the beginning was, uh, of course, um, not too easy to learn new culture, start new life, and um, especially when we um, went to Montreal, learning a uh, new language uh, was French. Uh, but uh, for me, the most privileged uh, things living in Canada is having voice and having security, having um, freedom of speech. Voice to uh, um, describe your life, the voice to talk about your life or just uh, um, express you, your feeling, um, what you need, what you want and what you want to do for future of yourself and your, your children. That was a little bit difficult, but it took uh, almost two years to learn the, uh, the language because then my children were born and, you know, I have to have uh, opportunity to uh, the, have communication with my children and help them uh, in education and life. Of course, it was really important to learn French. Uh, it was beautiful language, yeah, I love, I love that, that I had that opportunity to learn French, of course. Uh, I remember all the words, actually, I understand very well, but, uh, you know... Can you say something in some words in French? Uh, la vie is... Uh, la vie est uh, jolie. Uh, life is beautiful. Life is... Um, Iran, I have really good memories. The time I was living there, I was um, born in a very well-established family. Uh, and um, from childhood, I learned how to get involved with people's life and how to help them from my parents, uh, whether uh, my parents were building uh, houses for people or just helping underprivileged people. And I learned how to go even door to door uh, to help people with my mom. And um, actually it is um, in our culture to know about people's life, what is their needs. That's the culture in Iran. No matter what, we have to know uh, what's going on in people's life, in neighbors' life, or 
if you are in a school, children, uh, what is missing in their life and to help them. And gradually, you know, uh, when I reached to the, the youth I, uh, ages, I was able to go to um, villages to help, uh, you know, women how to read and write and work with the underprivileged children again and followed my parents' footsteps. And I have beautiful memories which people, they were, it was a good time in which I lived in Iran and people was really nice to each other and then with revolution everything changed and war and revolution, uh, it changed everything. You know. Because it was a revolution and war and um, mostly I was uh, seeking um, security uh, and I was thinking uh, if I have a children in the future I need to uh, my children to live in very secure and uh, beautiful country which I ha they have opportunity. The same thing which I had at the time Iran was okay for myself, education and good life. So I wanted my children to have almost the same life I, have, I had before. So I chose Canada because it is a multicultural country. You never feel you are uh, far away from home. It is home. It is homeland for all the immigrants. Well, uh, I remember when my father was governor in uh, which we have to go um, to different province and uh, cities and every year actually he was changing the place, transfers to different places. We learn about uh, different culture because we have seven uh, languages in Iran and in each area is different. And um, most of people in villages, they couldn't write and read. And um, I was going with my elder sisters. Uh, they were um, actually, t uh, that time, they were teaching uh, for underprivileged people uh, in different uh, areas. And uh, I was very young. I was going with them and learning from them how to help women. And we were going to their homes, actually, to see what they need, what is their need. That's part of our job. It was part of our job in my family as a governor's daughter and as a, you know, being in society uh, to contribute uh, to people how to be uh, useful for them, not to forget about your people even if you, you are living in highest level in, in the country. No, my uh, parents, uh, they lived in Iran my, um, for uh, at least after revolution, after uh, the, 10 years they were allowed to leave the country and come and see the children. Half of us, we are in uh, the Europe, my sister's brothers in Vienna, uh, um, and in Amsterdam, and uh, me, uh, I'm the only one here, we are 10 children. We are in different countries, and some of us are still in Iran. And um, it depends to situation of children. How well, I um, the most important things, which always I think, why we are separated from each other because we were really big family, and uh, mostly for children because they have to be around their cousins and you know and aunts or you know, uh, families, but we uh, travel a lot. Uh, almost every year I go to, to Europe and just, you know, see my family. And when my parents, which passed away two, uh, two years ago, uh, two, three years ago, actually, um, one after another, um, uh, they were coming to Europe also when we gathered together in one place and we had, uh, you know, family gathering and uh, still we have a connection, you know, mostly by phone and if I can go to Iran by phone and then when uh, I went to uh, Dubai, my family, they came because it's close to Iran, so they came there and we met there. Uh, when I go to Europe, they come, every, everybody gather together and just we are having fun. As an immigrant, of course, because I came from life which, uh, you know, it was very comfortable and established life. We had everything. And uh, as a very young immigrant, I had to start from zero and learn how to work outside of the home be because um, all I knew uh, working in governor house or uh, UNICEF, then in Canada, you have to start, you know, working as a common uh, person and just, you know, uh, no matter what. And I was so brave enough to learn every kind of work. 
because uh, they were asking why you want you are working in different area. I said because when my children grow up, I have an answer. How is this job? How is that job? As a salesperson, as a the bank or the travel agency or any jobs I have done, I cherish it. I enjoy that. I had a, many, many training actually for that. So yeah, I see my life uh, at the beginning. It was difficult because of that. As I said, you know, learning new language uh, or adopt, adopting to new uh, culture and society. But after that, it was, it comes easily for immigrants. You know, you, you adjust to this country easily because it is multicultural. Every, everybody respects each other, and, you know. Nobody's Canadian and everybody is, you know, uh, the same. So, yeah. Um, comparing with the time we came, which uh, in Canada, they were not that much uh, uh, aware of, you know, this much immigrant, all the sudden from around the world came to uh, Canada. Um, we had facilities, uh, just like, you know, learning new language and classes, but right now, which I'm working with newcomer immigrants, refugees, I can hear they, there are many, many facilities with many courses they can have, it, you know, just as soon as possible, they can just practice their own in uh, on their own field and their own path and uh, whatever their education is they can uh, just continue that and just uh, for us it was a little bit more difficult because of mostly because of the language was completely different uh, but uh, i believe immigrants they have many many opportunities here no matter from what country they are coming what language they are speaking they have the same problem which they have to establish their life here and start new life and uh, they have to remember why they have came here uh, and what is the reason and they cherish their life here in Canada. We have lots of opportunities. Can money give me happiness and peace? In nowadays we live in a society in which money is all about. I want to buy a car because my happiness it's on my car. I desire to have a huge, a big house because my happiness, my peace is on that house. But finally, we are really happy. Mm. Welcome to our Living in Peace and Happiness with Pooja Rubrao next. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining our segment on Living in Peace and Happiness. I'm going to talk a little about what happiness means to me. So happiness really is a state of the mind. I could be the richest person on the planet, but still feel uneasy and unhappy. So happiness is really nothing to do with wealth. It's nothing to do with relationships. It's nothing to do with my job success. There are some of us who like to postpone our happiness. We talk about, oh, I'll be happy when I get that next promotion, or I'll be happy when I can buy that Mazda 6, or I'll be happy when my son graduates, or endless conditions that we put on our happiness. But happiness is truly an inner choice. So when we wake up in the morning, we make the decision to be happy no matter what. There will be many, many opportunities during the day for us to forget about that determination. A friend will get upset with us, something will get go wrong at work, our dog falls sick. Many different things can happen during the day that completely take away our thoughts from that determination of choosing to be happy. Every moment of the day, we have to come back to that choice we made. I personally, every morning when I wake up, I decide I'm going to be happy. And of course, things go wrong. I forget about that determination, but that doesn't stop me from redetermining again. So when I'm sitting down in the evening and reflecting, I know that there were several times during the day when I lost sight of that goal and I became unhappy. I think about what caused that unhappiness, what made me angry, what made me upset, and what it is that I can do to make sure I don't go down that path again because I don't like being angry, I don't like being irritated. I want to be happy, I want to be at peace, so I need to create that environment around myself and it all begins with me. 
I can't hold another responsible. I don't want to hold another responsible because the fact is that nobody else is responsible for my happiness other than me. And this is something I've understood deeply through my practice of Buddhism. I've been practicing Buddhism for several years. And the whole philosophy that I practice is about, the whole philosophy of Buddhism is about self-empowerment and taking responsibility for one's own life. So taking responsibility for my life means I take responsibility for my thoughts, I take responsibility for my words, I take responsibility for my actions, I take responsibility for the way I react. So even though another person may be doing or saying something that's not very pleasant, I take responsibility for my reaction to that person. Do I want to react as negatively as they come across? Or do I want to put a stop to that? Do I want to walk away or do I want to make a positive response? I make those decisions. It's true that while I'm in the middle of the situation, I can't always make rational decisions, right? I just react. But that's what, to me, that's what my Buddhist practice is about. I train myself through my prayer, through my reading, for those situations every day. And I work on those attitudes that I want to work on so that I can hold on to my goal of being happy no matter what, of being at peace. And the fact is that I can't be happy just by myself. So if, my, if a family member is not feeling happy or if I'm going to work and I have a colleague who's upset, it affects the entire environment because we don't live in isolation, we are all social beings and we react and respond to each other constantly, we are affected by each other. And happiness is not something I can experience in isolation. Human beings are social beings and we all respond and react to each other. So if I'm going to work and if I have a colleague who's upset for whatever reason and she has this aura around her of irritation, of anger, though she doesn't say the words, I am affected by it. Whether, I, whether she expresses it verbally or not, it definitely impacts me, it definite, definitely impacts everybody around her. So happiness is not something I can only choose for myself. I have to make everybody else part of that goal, though of course it starts with me. But like I said, it can be in isolation. I can't just worry about myself and if my son is not happy or a colleague's not happy, just keep going my merry way. The whole point, and Buddhism talks about that, is a concept called world peace and happiness, where it begins with one person, it begins with me, but we are all interconnected. And when I start that happiness glow, I transfer it to the next person, the next person transfers it to another person and the chain goes on and on. And eventually, there will be a moment in time when all of us will experience happiness. Um, I'd like to close this and we'll come back next week. But all I want to say in closing is that happiness is a choice. We need to make it every single day and sometimes more than once a day. We choose to be happy no matter what we think about it, that other people are affecting us. My husband said this and so I'm unhappy or today I'm not feeling well and today my, it's raining, that's why I'm unhappy, it's affecting my mood. No matter what we may have been thinking about that concept of happiness till today, the truth is that happiness is an individual choice that we all make. Thank you. Own Canada, our home and native land. Take a look with Jordi Minas Magazine's program, film for you. It's Canada's birthday, our second country, our second home. is celebrated with fireworks and festivals everywhere. Happy birthday, Canada. Where you live and who you are now are a part of you, whether good or bad. And now here I stand, and in front of me is my childhood from Friends who we call family, and that's who they'll always be. Under the open sky, but seem to go. Years they have gone by, oh, but nothing's changed. 
A new Canadian flag was raised for the first time in 1965. The red, white, red patterns comes from the flag of the Royal Military College Kingston, founded in 1876. Canada is a multicultural country where you can eat, dance and know many traditions of the world without paying a ticket. The world is here, all together, for this important celebration. And also a country where you can learn to speak different languages, Chinese, Tagalog, Spanish and much more. for accepting us as part of your culture. Canada is the second home for millions of immigrants coming from all around the world. We love you, Canada. Sometimes many of our guests act as, hey, um, your camera is on or off? Behind the scenes, next. It was very nice, no? Very nice interview, yeah. congratulations. Very congratulations. Very nice work, yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
Yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> I try not to. No, I, I normally don't have that much gesture. I normally, because we, we are coming from formal family, we have to sit like that, always in the parties and talk, I mean, just slowly have a speech. So, yeah, I try not to be <laughs> too oh, emotional. You were so natural, so always so natural. Natural. Oh, thank, thank you. Your you can see your mom like you are Thank you. In my opinion, don't try to compare your life with another person. On that way, you will never get the happiness. Try to enjoy your life with the simplest of the things, because on those simple things are the joy. Besos para ti, cuídate mucho, bye. Problemas de relaciones interpersonales, separación, divorcio, problemas con niños, adolescentes y adultos. Soy la doctora Yolanda Montoya, soy clinical counselor y mi teléfono es el 604-861-1071.